Hello, good morning everyone. Magpapatulong lang ako kay, kay Gift ba? Pakita muna yung slides para I will discuss using the slides. I don't have a PowerPoint, so patulong lang. Ayan, Vipad. Okay. Now, I we, we were asked by uh, Grace and the uh, organizers to wear a costume. But actually, when I was in Iceland, I, I visited Iceland twice. And I haven't seen the national costume of Iceland. <laughs> Ang nangalam ko lang, they will always tell you, okay, as a souvenir, you can buy Lopa Pesa. This is a sweater from Iceland that is made of silk or from the sheep. So it's quite expensive and ang, ang masasabi ko lang sa inyo, you can buy this in a in the thrift market near the port. So that's the first uh, tip. This is the one of the souvenirs that you can buy from Iceland. Second uh, slide. Okay, um I, as I said, we traveled twice to Iceland. The first one was in February of 2016. One tip uh, going to Iceland is to travel during the off season, which is normally during winter and spring. But except for the winter of December, which is a holiday season, uh, I think the best time is to travel by February, which is the dead of winter. Don't talaga uh, kung ang ambition mo lang ay makita ang northern lights. Malaka, malaki ang probability na makita mo during February. So this is the church, uh, Hal Grimska Church, which is one of the main attractions in the city itself. So this was uh, taken in the morning, right after we were uh, brought, you know, when we when we got off from our bus. So wala kaming mapuntahan dahil di kami makapag-check-in. So nag-picture taking muna kami ng, ng dalawa kong anak. You can go up the, the belfry for a fee and then you can see uh, the, the main uh, streets in Iceland. It's a very colorful site. You can take pictures and then you can also uh, go around the belfry and take this, all this, you know, the scenery that you can see from the, from the top. That's uh, the Harpa, which is uh, the concert hall in in Iceland. Um, when we went in February 2016, wala ka halos makita ng hotel in the in along the you know along the port. But when we came back in the spring of 2017, and dami nang ginagawa ng mga hotel sa Iceland. Incidentally, uh, tourism is one of the main industries of Iceland. So when you join a tour, they will always say thank you for coming to Iceland because without your dollars, we won't be recovering from our, because they had, uh, in 2008, nag, uh, nagkaroon ng, uh, parang nagkaroon ng problem, economic problem ng Iceland. So uh, they were able to recover because of tourism. It's It's good to go inside the that uh, that particular concert hall. This one is our saving. I mean, this actually helped us. In the, it's the cheapest food that you can buy in Iceland. And this is the most famous hot dog of Iceland. Even uh, President Clinton visited this place just to buy the, the hot dog. How could I describe the hot dog? It's $3 US dollars worth. And uh, ang importante din yung ano yung parang may onion siya na naka 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 parang parang pickle siya eh. that is very flavorful kaya talagang pinipilahan dito itong lugar na ito the 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 para ma locate mo ito just look for the harbor go towards the harbor and it's right beside in front of uh, Radisson Hotel so don't forget visiting this hot dog stand. And the next slide. Oh, this was uh, during our first trip to Iceland in February. We we went uh, via Iceland Air. Actually, Iceland was not part of the 
offering a package for $800, which already included three nights in a hotel, airfare, the transfer, spinning the bus transfer from the airport to uh, downtown Reykjavik, plus uh, a spa and a Northern Lights tour. So $800, which is about 32,000 32, pesos for three nights and four days. So that's a very cheap, uh, you know, package going to Iceland from Toronto. Th this uh, golf course is uh, when you when you are looking for package tours. This uh, this is part of the Golden Circle package, which is a five-hour tour that includes uh, visiting the geyser because. One of the main industries of Iceland is uh, geothermal energy. Pag pumunta ka sa pa Iceland, makikita mo parang lahat mo usok yung, yung kalsada, yung mga mountain, puro usok ko makikita mo, especially during winter. So uh, this was in Golfos, one of the mo more popular waterfalls in Iceland. And uh, aside from visiting the geyser, Golfos, you also go to Pink Belier National Park which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It has, um, you can see, I don't know what tectonic means, but in the Pink Belier uh, National Park, you will see the tectonic plates of North, North America and Europe. So you can, you can also have a separate tour where you can swim between the two tectonic plates. So it's, uh, this, this is part of the Golden Circle Tour. When we went there, it was approximately uh, Canadian dollars, 83, $83, which is about 3,000 pesos. And this is the, what I, I was saying, the geysers. So you can see smoke coming out from from anywhere in Iceland when you go around Muusok ang, ang Iceland. That's why even during winter, the, the, the roads in Iceland doesn't really, hindi, hindi nag-accumulate masyadong snow because underneath, there's a lot of geo, geothermal energy. Hindi katulad sa, sa Canada, kumakapal ang, ang snow when it's winter. But in Iceland, um, it's it's very, very thin ice and it's not really as cold as Canada. Sabi nga nung isang yung cousin ko, why, why go to, to Iceland in February? You're already go to a cold place and then you go to a colder place. Actually, in Iceland, it's not so cold. It's colder. It's probably like, um, it's about zero degrees during winter. Lumalamig lang siya pag nagkaroon. Kasi ang, ang weather sa Iceland, it's parang, parang ano eh, hindi siya, it's very um, fickle. You know, one time, mga five minutes, biglang, lalakas ang ano lalak nagkakaroon ng hailstorm tapos bigla na lang aaraw siya within 10 minutes may hailstorm ka may araw biglang magiging windy and that's the problem if you are planning a trip and you want to drive make sure that you are aware of the weather condition when you when you rent a car in Iceland dahil baka pag ikaw ay when you're just driving alone with one one car baka ma bigla ka masiraan or you cannot drive, mahihirapan ka. Because malayo ang mga gas stations doon. Wala ka mahi, you know, baka ma-stranded kayo. So again, this is one of the most popular uh, waterfalls in Iceland. It's Kogafoss. And this was during our second trip to Iceland in the, in the spring of 2017. Again, why did I go to Iceland after one year? Uh, in 2017, nag, nagbukas ang isang budget airline, WOW Airline. WOW Airline is a budget airline that uh, declared bank bankruptcy in 2019. But in 2017, they offered very cheap rates. We got our ticket only for $280 Canadian, which is about 11,000 pesos. So sabi ko sa mga anak ko, total... Uh, Naka, meron naman kayong vacation days 
why don't we just go for three days or maybe a weekend? So we we took uh, advantage of the very cheap rates, $280. And this is part of the South Shore Adventure trip, which cost about 135 Canadian dollar, roughly about 4,000 4, pesos. It brings you to two waterfalls, La Spoga Falls and uh, Self, Selfados, I think. I cannot remember the name of that waterfalls. And it also goes to the glacier. And uh, what else did you visit? And uh, Black Sand Beach of Vic. This is the Aga Waterfall. The Selfados, I think, the name of the waterfalls. You can go behind the falls. So you can go up. I think uh, Justin Bieber shot a video of uh, of himself going to the this waterfalls and going up the waterfalls because you can trek up at the top of the waterfalls. Nakita nyo, this is during... Uh, during winter, I mean during spring. So makikita mo na halos walang, so there's no more snow, but you can only see mostly moss and lava. So pag, pag, in fact, when you go down uh, from your flight at mag go you on the way to the city center, makikita mo lang either moss or lava along the way. This is the glacier, which is part of our south shore adventure and uh, and they were saying because of uh, global warming the, the size of this glacier has tremendously decreased so meron ding mga separate tours that you can avail of going to you know trekking don't do it yourself you cannot definitely do do it yourself going to crystal crystal caves or going to a walk in the glacier you have to get a special guide, so you have to join tours. And uh, on our first trip, as I said, going back to February of 2016, we were able to see the Northern Lights. But this one was on our way back. This uh, Northern Lights that I took a picture of was unexpected on the way back to Canada because it was February. I don't know which part of Canada this is. But on my plane, my window in the airplane, I was able to see the northern lights in probably this is in Winnipeg or Manitoba or maybe Yellow Yellow uh, Yellow Knife. So you can also see the or oh, this is still this is in Japan. Japan na Okay. So as I said, um, two of the countries that I that was uh, given to me as to talk about are the most expensive countries to visit. Iceland, I would say, uh, having been to a lot of countries, na shock ako sa pagkain na the cost of food in Iceland. So ang ang tip ko sa Iceland number one is to go grocery shopping. When as soon as you arrive, go to a a grocery store. Don't go to the 10-11 store. It's like 7-11 of of Iceland, go to the bonus bonus uh, store, which is along the main shopping street of Iceland. And bumili na kayo ng pagkain nyo, mga sandwiches. And if you are renting uh, an apartment, it's better to cook rather than to eat outside. Even uh, wala kasing McDonald's or Burger King sa Iceland. You cannot, there's no, uh, there's no uh, Starbucks in Iceland. So, and even the cheapest, we went to a, a what's that, Donald, uh, the the shop, the I think it's a donut shop, American donut shop. I don't remember the name now. A donut in itself, a, a coffee and donut cost me thirty U.S. dollars. So na shock talaga ako no when we ate breakfast in in the the do, Mr. Donut. I don't know the name of the donut store. So that's how expensive it is. Now, the second expensive uh, trip uh, country to go to is Tokyo. But nowadays, I don't consider it uh, that expensive anymore, especially 
when you go coming from Manila, I think you can buy tickets from to from Manila to Tokyo by Cebu Pacific less than three thousand dollars pesos. I I'm not sure. I, my 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 brothers and sisters sometimes go for seat sales and they say it's very cheap going to Tokyo. But um, I've been traveling to Tokyo since in the early 1980s, mainly for uh, company visits or uh, business trips. So no una, it's not really part of my dream, you know, dream trip. It was because I was always uh, asked to go there to make some visits and all my my expenses were paid for by the company. So during free time, I would visit Tokyo Disneyland, which is normally what is very near. And this was in Sanrio Puro Land, which is uh, uh, another, um, you know, uh, place to visit. But it's, I think it's more for small children because you can, own, oh, okay. And this is Kam Kamamura, the big, uh, the big Buddha of Kam Kamamura, which is about an hour from Tokyo Station. So this is the, some of the areas that you can visit one hour from one hour from uh, Tokyo. In Tokyo itself, oh, this is in Kyoto. During my one of my my visits to the company company I was working for, because I used to work with a Japanese company, and every year they would send their managers to visit the the factories in Japan. So uh, they will also give you a tour of uh, like, where do you want to go? So I said, I want to go to Kyoto. So in the in one of my trips, uh, Kinkakuji, this is Kinkakuji or the golden golden uh, temple, I think, in in uh, in Kyoto. So uh, there's a lot of very uh, nice areas to visit. This is probably three hours by bullet train from Tokyo. I don't remember anymore. So, and this is right after I was able to cross the Shibuya crossing. Siguro alam naman nyo Shibuya crossing. Everybody goes there to take pictures, to cross just the zigzag. I think it's a crossing, you know, like two minutes, you are allowed to take pictures while crossing. Not everybody, Everybody goes there to just go to shop in Shibuya, but just to take pictures of the Shibuya crossing. Shibuya is a district famous for teen, with teenagers. Kasi uh, nandito lahat yung mga famous stores for teenagers like, uh, what what are the, uh, I don't know, <laughs> like, karoon ako ng mental block, but anyway, the te most are, Young young people go to Shibuya. Shinjuku is more of um, an area for business businessmen, and of course you know that uh, uh, one of the most important you know uh, expense in in uh, Tokyo is accommodations. So while searching, when I went to this was my trip in two thousand nineteen. When I was searching for places to uh, stay in, I decided to have an experience. So the experience was staying in a capsule hotel. And the capsule, oh, this one was uh, part of the Mount Fuji tour that I, it's a one day tour from, from Tokyo. If you don't like to think about, you know, what train to take, where to stop and what to do next, then you can probably join, just join the package tour, which is $73 and uh, about 2,900 pesos. So you will be brought to, this one is in uh, Lake Kawaguchi, which, which is the best place to have a nice uh, view of Mount Fuji. But during the time that we went there, nagtatago ang Mount Fuji, ayun o, nasa, nasa background. So this is one of the places that we visited, aside from the Mount Fuji Shrine, which is below the below Mount Fuji. So it's a, a whole day tour that will bring you to small villages. This is the Wak Wakyuki Pond, 
which is also part of the tour to Mount Fuji. When you go to Mount Fuji, hindi ka sigurado rin na you can go up to even Station 1. Station 1 is below the mountain because it depends on the weather condition. During the time that I took the tour, nagkaroon ng snowfall, uh, severe snowfall the night before. So hindi kami makaakyat sa Station 1 which is below the the mountain. So dito lang kami dinala ng dinala ng tour guide namin. It's a very nice village. This Wakyuki village or the Wakyuki pond is part of the there are five uh, ponds in the village. And you can buy uh, traditional food, traditional uh, wear and observe different traditional uh, uh, activities in this in the small village. This is my um, my uh, capsule hotel accommodation. So every day you have to check out. So you have you can check in in the morning at eleven. You they will give you a locker key. You put all your belongings in the locker and uh and um but the following day you have to check out even if you you serve for five days every day you have to check out and check in again so if you are claustropro claustrophobic i don't think you can last for five days anyway two uh, two days lang naman ako nag-stay dito okay that's about it <laughs>